What I find absolutely remarkable about this game is that it manages to create a very beautiful dystopia. A dystopia that is wrapped in a nice polished package hidden by the beautiful PR that corporations can make. You see, this game warns us about oppression coming not from the government, but multi-billion multinational corporations that have managed to gather so much power that even governments can't mess with. And what's interesting is that this oppression is masked by well-produced modern public relations, diversity actions, corporate shills manipulating the truth and masquerading as journalists, and of course, to wrap it all up, a mission with a noble purpose. And underneath all of these nice front packages hides a very dark and terrible truth that the player gets to uncover as he progresses throughout the game. The game takes place in the future and due to global warming, the planet is now dying. And the corporation known as Creo takes it upon itself to fix this problem. The solution? Project Resolve. Project Resolve consists in Creo launching into space a various number of rockets with the purpose of releasing certain chemicals that will revert the global warming process. The overwhelming workforce at Creo consists of people that have been crippled. They call them lumberjacks, giving them exosuits, allowing them to be able to walk again. You play as Warren, a person who has been crippled in a car accident and decided to get a job at Creo. And as you're traveling to your first day at work, you meet Don Hackett, a British journalist who is also the PR face of Creo and is bombarding you from the very beginning with company propaganda. Welcome. I know you're glad to be here. I am, and I'm glad to see you. Creo, you know who we are, or at least you think you do. Everywhere you turn, we're there, whether you see us or not. Maybe it's time to take a closer look. Creo is one of the world's largest manufacturers of consumer and industrial products, but for so much more. And that's why you're here. At Creo, we're always reaching for the stars. change the world. With Project Resolve, we aim to save it. There's no divide here. The Creo, we're all in this together. So welcome to your new life as part of the Creo family. As Warren arrives into the very beautiful and luxurious halls of the Creo company, he goes towards the job application where he has to undergo the surgery promised so that he can be able to walk again. Unfortunately, however, something goes terribly wrong. Rig installation program running. Program complete. Patient sedated. Initiating surgery. Shortly after, Warren wakes up into a living nightmare. The automated robots working at Creo have gone haywire and are attacking anyone they see, while the workers seem to have their implants malfunctioning and turning them into crazy psychopaths. Warren manages to fight his way all the way onto operations where he meets a hologram by the name of Sally. Sally tells Warren that she is a medical officer which is trapped into the executive boardroom and asks Warren in order to try to find her. 
As Warren keeps exploring the various state-of-the-art facilities at Creo, he notices how the workers were exposed to non-stop propaganda by journalist Don Hackett. Propaganda with the purpose of putting a pleasant spin to the oppression that the workers, once under the employment of Creo, had to suffer on a weekly basis. That's why we're all here, to make a dream reality. Not just for us, but for our children. And for our children's children. Creo's not just a company, it's a way of life. Here you're not just seen as anybody, you're somebody, somebody special. At Creo, we have your well-being at heart, and that includes body and mind. Creo's more than just a job. Here your family, here your home. But you want more, right? Why pay for expensive gym and spa memberships when Creo has state-of-the-art facilities right here? And as for vacations, what if I told you you can have one every week? That's right. With Creo's Dream Tour Systems, or DTS, you can go anywhere in the world and even beyond. DTS feeds directly into your neural interface, and voila! You're on a beach in Rio, or Mardi Gras in New Orleans. Something more cultural? How about a stroll along the scene in beautiful Paris? Or what about enjoying the Colosseum during the height of the Roman Empire? That's right. DTS can fulfill all your desire. Enjoy a two-week vacation in less than an hour with DTS. Wherever you want to go, whatever you want to do, is just a click away. With so much to offer, why would you ever leave? To me, this was something deeply harrowing, chilling me to the bone. Finding how forcing workers to slave for seven days a week and try to prevent them from going back home and from seeing their families was wrapped up in this really nice PR package. It also makes sense why the company was hiring people in wheelchairs. It wasn't from the kindness of their heart. No, it was on one hand to show good PR to the public and on the other hand, to take these desperate individuals that have nowhere else to go so that they can mold them, so that they can try to create the idea into their minds that they are someone, that they are part of the family from a multi-billion dollar corporation, and that they have to dedicate everything to the company. As you play the game, you find also other audio logs from different people, and you feel how they treat workers just as a resource. At one point, a supervisor is complaining that a worker had an accident and just didn't die because it would have been cheaper for the company had the worker just perished. This stuff is toxic, right? Well, we can't just keep dumping it wherever on the facility. We've had another accident. Well, thank God he's only a cripple. Or uh, is it cheaper for the company if they're killed outright? In another one, they are talking about firing a worker because he refuses to have the brain implant, which this video talks about, meaning that the worker was a problem. And the way they talk about his termination was incredibly casual. Because you see, for the supervisor, that worker wasn't part of the family. That worker wasn't in reality even a human being. He was just an asset that was causing a small problem for them that they could have just got rid of with a flick of the wrist as they signed the termination paper. As Warren progresses through the game, he fights his way through different of the now crazy workers and manages to rescue survivors, finding out about their story, finding out about the audio logs um, describing the worker conditions, and more importantly, he finds out that the Project Resolve had unforeseen consequences. While it was managing to indeed reverse global warming, it also was incredibly costly. It would take a lot of time for it to be finished. But more importantly, one of the really dangerous side effects was that it would cause damage to the human population. You see, people were starting to get born more and more sick. And because of that, various questions from outside sources regarding Project Resolve started to arise. And Creo, using Don Hackett, which was the prize-winning British journalist that was acting as the corporate shill, 
was doing damage control on behalf of this corporation. Now, obviously, this is a video game, so it's just one character, but in reality, such a multi-million dollar corporation would have probably had a vast array of journalists and other people to do damage control on their behalf. I'd like to welcome back Jonah Gutenberg, founder and CEO of Creo. Jonah, thank you for coming. It's always a pleasure. Thank you, Doc. Now, usually it's me bugging your office to try and get a moment from your busy schedule. But today, you actually requested time with me. That's right, and I appreciate you talking to me at such short notice. No, thank you. You've obviously got something on your mind. Yeah, and now I'm going to speak frankly here. Over the last few months, Creo has been viciously attacked by certain elements in the media. They've been propagating myths and inciting the public against Creo and Project Resolve. Honestly, it's hard to believe. Why would anybody want to do that? Don, you know as well as I. We know what it's like out there. They'd sell their own mothers for a headline, and that's what it's about. Make no mistake, they don't have any altruistic intentions here. It's all about the money. Sensationalism sells. These allegations of sky fracking, that Project Resolve is responsible for the increase in disease and disabilities over the last few decades? Garbage. Complete and utter garbage. Sorry. It's hard to keep my calm. What have these people done for humanity? Have they sweated and bled like we have at Creo? No. The personal attacks, I don't care. They can honestly say what they like about me, but against those that work here at Creo and the people behind Project Resolve? That's where I draw the line. The world was dying. Did anyone else step up to the plate? Did anyone else raise their hand? I invested all I had in Creo and Project Resolve because I want to invest in the future of humanity. Unfortunately, this story is all too common with the so-called press and left-wing media. They'd rather make up a story than follow the facts. But what about the people and the growing sentiment that we should be looking for another solution to Earth's problems? The people? They will point their gaze to whichever way the wind blows. It's in our history. No matter how many times visionaries throughout the centuries have worked for the betterment of mankind, they've been demonized, roasted alive as heretics. There is no such thing as gratitude from the masses. You must work for the species and yourself, or not at all. Mm. Thank you for your time. Always a pleasure to, to hear you speak. I'm sorry if I got a little carried away. But I am passionate about my convictions. I find it fascinating how the corporation views itself as the victim when members of the public were just asking legitimate questions. Behind the scenes, Dr. Melissa Chavez, which was in charge of Project Resolve, was officially fired when they found out about the side effects. Unofficially, however, she still works in the company trying to see if there is a way to fix Project Resolve's side effects. When you first meet her, she is under attack by the security forces. The security forces are not there to restrain her, as she says, and they were meant to eliminate her. Because she was off the grid, everyone knew that they worked at the company, it was very easy for the company to make her disappear. She gives you a data storage device where she claims that she managed to fix the problems with Project Resolve and alleviated side effects. She asks you to urgently take that data storage to two of her members in the board that she has connections with. As Warren tries to make it to the executive forum, he takes an accidental detour and lands into the research and development part of the corporation. Here he finds out that Project Resolve is now getting abandoned and instead a new project called Project Utopia is being promoted. Project Utopia is led by Dr. Gene Barrett, a replacement for Dr. Chavez. Project Utopia was a one-off solution, meaning it was cheaper, it would have took only one rocket to launch into space and it would have fixed the global warming. 
The only problem that Project Utopia had was that it would incur a 95% fatality rate amongst the human population. The way the corporations tried to explain it away was that they view it as cleaning house. Overpopulation was already a problem and it would only take the suffering of one generation in order to save the planet. Dr. Jean Bennett also had a side project, which is unknown if it was sanctioned or not by the board, called Homo Mechanalis. This project forced humans to become robots in order to survive the incoming apocalypse. The way he would get subjects for these experiments was indeed quite chilling. I've just received a communication from Mary Shaw. Name doesn't ring a bell? Well, it fucking should. It's Michael Shaw's sister. Candidates for the program were meant to have no family or friends. This is on your head. I expect this situation dealt with quickly and quietly. We find out that the reason the corporation has gone this way is because the executive board thought themselves to be above the people. They thought themselves to be always right and everyone else to be in the wrong. They th realize that if they want to make an omelet, they have to break a few eggs and that they have a moral obligation towards humanity, not towards nation states, not towards the people, but they were the ones that were the savior of humanity. And with such ideological thinking, it means that they are for the greater good and they cannot do any wrong. Now, as you finally manage to reach the executive board, Warren finds out that they were all dead, save for one. Before dying, they were voting on whether or not they should release Project Utopia, and the person who was still alive, but was about to die, hasn't casted his vote yet. Sally, the person that you met ushering you to go to the executive board, is actually an AI, and needed someone to lift the lockdown in order for her to reach the board and try to give assistance to the person that was dying. Unfortunately, she does not manage to save him and because he hasn't casted his vote, Project Utopia manages to get the go ahead. Now, at this point, uh, the game starts becoming uh, a little bit more sci-fi. We find out that the way Project Utopia works is by having nanites. And the nanorobots are the ones that have managed to gain self-awareness. They have managed to gain consciousness. And they're the ones which managed to uh, cause the surge, which killed the board members and caused all the havoc within the facility. At this point, the nanites are starting to take form and they're the last boss in the game which you're fighting. Basically, they gain form by latching on to robots or to humans and using the human brain or the robot's AI in order to form this hive mind which has uh, incredible intellect and is going to jeopardize humanity. Uh, you have two possible endings. The first one is by trying to inject a virus into Project Utopia. And as the rocket goes into space, the uh, nanites become inert. However, when the government sends a strike team inside the Creo facilities, uh, the initial strike team gets attacked by the nanites. So obviously, uh, that's where the infestation is going to start from. Uh, and the other ending is where you don't send the virus and the nanites just get deployed into space and initially start targeting uh, satellites, disrupting human communication as they land on Earth. So basically the two endings is whether or not humanity gets a heads up or not. And uh, this is leaving a lot of room for a sequel uh, where you are going to get uh, in September as The Search 2 comes out. I really love this game. Um, it's dark soulish in its nature. It's very slow progressing, uh, requires um, uh, a high difficulty to master. Um, but I love the story of it. I, I really love the um, feeling of it. The vibe that I got was similar to Dead Space, maybe because of the strong rig that you get around. And it's got a couple of horror elements here and there, but most of the horror comes from the psychological aspects because seeing corporations managing to put this really nice and friendly face in order to cover their atrocities, uh, having journalists uh, defend corporations uh, and making sure that the public doesn't get to find out what goes behind it, or even taking the oppression that corporations do, but giving it a positive spin, uh, making people enjoy the oppression, 
was just uh, an astonishing piece of um, story that um, really really made me feel uh, vibes. Another thing that I, I got uh, the chills is when you finally see the journalist uh, Don oh Hackett, uh, which uh, hanged himself the moment he found out his role within the company, the moment he found out how he was used as a useful idiot in order to push the corporation agenda made me feel very empathetic to the character, especially as uh, his feelings of uh, guilt amounted to uh, un insufferable levels, uh, showing that he wanted to do the right thing, he wanted to do the good thing, he really believed in this company, however his gullibleness was used by a corporation uh, against his moral judgment. And it's also a very dark contrast uh, where throughout the game you see him uh, as this really friendly guy, this, this nice chap that wants to be your friend. And in reality, he was definitely suffering from powerful feelings of remorse and depression from having to be the corporate mouthpiece. Mom, sorry I've been out of contact for so long. I just wanted to let you know how much I love you and Dad. We've been working on a new project. I can't really say anything about it, but I have reservations. I'd like you to all go out to Uncle Ricardo's. He's, he's got a shelter. You need to... I know the world seems to have stopped watching, and maybe <laughs> that's the issue. We've made some decisions. Decisions I'm not proud to say that I was originally part of. But we wanted to do our best. What do they say? The road to hell is paved with good intentions. Well, ours certainly were. Even those who I believe have now gone too far, they were still doing it for you, for mankind. But looking at the big picture, they, they lost perspective. We lost perspective. It's why I believe it is my duty as a citizen of this country and of the world to bring to your attention utopia unauthorized unsanctioned untested designed to replace resolve though instead of proper channels it has been fast tracked through the back door you need to know what this will do what this will do to you all utopia is